Our lab's house is a beacon of hope. Culture. Freedom. Autistic. Stories. Art. Adventurous. Vibrancy. Inclusivity. Welcoming. Our house for me is colourful. Hello everyone, my name is Aldia Binsel and I'm one of the co-hosts at Our Lab's House and Art Gallery. And today we have with us Marlon Parker who is one of our curators um, and he's going to share a little bit more about how we come about our art and why the art gallery started um, as well as um, how we choose our art. I think that's that's something that everyone wants to know and yeah, so I'm going to hand over to Marlon to introduce yourself to the audience. Yes, hello everybody. Um, as you heard, I'm Marlon Parker and part of the Art Labs house team um, specifically responsible for the curation of art. Um, thank you, Martin, for introducing yourself. You mind sharing with us why we started an art gallery with Immutual Slain? You know, Marudia, one of the big things I think for many people when they think about art and they talk about art galleries, they normally think the waterfront, they think mm -hmm. town in Johannesburg, they think, you know, Santon and all these kind of bigger cities. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reality is a lot of our artists come from the townships. Yeah. A lot of our artists come from communities such as Mitchell's Plain. Mm -hmm. And for us, it was very important. How do we create a space where local artists can be celebrated, but also for a young child growing up who aspires to be an artist that would actually see that there's a gallery in my community, so there's something for me to dream and aspire to. Um, and that's kind of really been the big kind of goal that we really want to make sure that, that we bring the world to Mitchell's Plain, but also it's an opportunity to take the art that's in our communities and allow us to showcase these amazing artists. Thank you. You mentioned something that I think is really important, is bringing the world to Mitchell's Plain to see the art. And how do we get the world to come to Mitchell's Plain and see our art? You know, art is such a beautiful expression of stories, right? It, it tells stories, it tells you something about the artists, it tells you something about the local community, um, and for us, it's really kind of been important to create um, spaces where international visitors, as well as local visitors, can come and experience the art in the Art Labs House Gallery. Um, I mean, we do that, of course, through First Thursdays. We're part of the First Thursdays network and movement. Um, it's the only First Thursdays that I believe that runs in a township at night, um, right? And it, and. And what it does, it means people have the ability to come and come and experience mm -hmm. some of the world's best art, I believe. At the same time, we also, as art labs, we do a lot of knowledge exchanges and learning journeys. We, we have a lot of people from all around the world that come and learn about the work that art labs does. And part of those kind of learning journeys, we ensure that people also have the opportunity to experience some of our local art. And I believe it's important for people that's that's also as much as it's open for people from the community we also want to ensure that people that's not from this local community have the opportunity to see and celebrate our artists thank you so how do we bring the community and these people and the world together um besides yeah to experience the same thing at the same time i think one we have to be very intentional it's the same experience mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're an auntie walking past with your little sh uh, shopping bag that just came from the shop mm -hmm. or a C-suite executive that finds yourself in Mitchell's Plain um, and coming to experience art, it's the same level of experience. Um, so that's one. Two, we do make sure that our artists go through a, a very rigorous process mm -hmm. of being selected. Um, it's not just any artist. I mean, mm -hmm. if it was any artist, then uh, my art would have been on the walls, <laughs> right? Um, I'm still hurting over the fact that my drawing was never chosen when I was at primary school as the best drawing at school. Um, but the reality is it goes through a, a proper kind of um, rigorous process of selection, curation, um, and the experience that we create in the gallery is the same for local, national and international guests. Thank you. You mentioned curating and making sure that the art that we exhibit in is for everybody. Yes. How do we go about, I think one question everybody wants to know is, how do we go about selecting the art or selecting the artists that we're going to feature for the month? I think a big thing for a lot of artists that once their work selected um, is one, share some of your work, reach out to the Art Labs house team, you know, it's house at artlabs.org, they can email, 
send the portfolio and what we will do is it basically kind of go through a process where we review it and we are specifically looking for art that tells authentic stories one two there has to be something about the piece of the art that that is so uniquely you um, i think many times artists kind of miss and i don't want people to kind of misunderstand there's a difference between something that's that's a craft and something that is art right craft is something that you want to mass produce art is something very specific um, where you want to create a unique expression to share and tell a story and that is what we're really looking for we're looking for things that are unique different types of art forms um, be it photography uh, any kind of visual art that we can exhibit i think that's very important um, from sculptures to to mixed media to oil painting to and there's a whole range of that so th so i think let's be very expressive with your art form and then the other thing i also want to encourage artists is we i know at art house we're trying to to work around creating kind of workshops with emerging and aspiring artists um, when you have an opportunity reach out find out when there's a workshop happening again and participate in those i think that's very important but a big thing for us is we want authentically local stories that we want to tell the world and stories that show that shows the world what is possible from which was playing. Thank you. So before we end, could you maybe share with us what's been your fondest memory? I mean, we're celebrating our two-year anniversary on the 4th of August. Um, we've been, yeah, what has been your most favorite memory so far? Sure, there's the many past. memories. I think, I think for me, a big memory is the first day, right? I mean, I remember it was probably raining. <laughs> we had a small little tent outside of the gallery. Everybody was kind of huddling, you know, and, and I was shocked, to be honest, that we had 70 people that rocked up that night. Um, we didn't know if this was really going to work. The worst thing for us was we weren't too sure in the beginning, are we going to be the only people here? And when the first person came, we were like, okay, it will be art plus one, right? And we were very happy. Yeah. But then 70 people rocked up to come and experience art in a very cold uh, winter's night. Um, and I think that was a very fond memory. And, and since then, seeing how the gallery and the first Thursday mo movement at, at Olive's house uh, has gone from strength to strength, um, and seeing how people are so appreciative of our local artists. I mean, for me, that is really the, the fondest memory. And that multi-generations, young and old, can come and experience um, an art gallery in their local community. Thank you so much for sharing the journey of All Labs House with us. All Labs House and Art Gallery with us. Um, yeah, if you haven't checked out All Labs House first Thursday um, on the 1st of August, you're welcome to visit us on any Saturday during the month of August while we exhibit emerging artists um, for the first time. Thank you. I'm Shanique Jacobs and today here yeah, we are still continuing the peace celebrations of our second anniversary and today I am joined by the lovely and talented musician out there and it is Trevina Isaacs. Welcome Trevina. Thank you so much Shanique, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. So some people might know of Mutual Family Music Academy mm. but there's the rest that don't. So can you please tell me how it all started out? So we actually started out in my mother's living room in New Woodlands in 2013. It was actually around July month. It was a winter's um, morning when it started and a student reached out to us who was studying music at school on high school level. And he had a Grahamstown National Jazz Festival, com not competition, but he had an audition for the mm -hmm. school's band. And at the time, I was just freelancing, working with various artists in the industry as a music director. And there was no intention of a music program, but he asked for help. And long story short, I helped him and he came in to the band, the school's band. He made it as the keyboard player that year. And then after that, he started actually encouraging others to come for lessons with me. Wow. And then we found ourselves with an academy in 2014. So that was 2013. 
And then officially I found myself having to start the academy in Mitchell Spring. Wow. So it didn't actually start with a plan to yes. start. <laughs> it just came from that one student who recommended others. And then they wanted drum lessons and guitar lessons, wow. vocal lessons. And then so we had to start a music program in yeah. Mitchell Spring. And so 2014 we officially established Mitchell Spring Music Academy. Wow, that's amazing. I can just assume everyone in the living room trying to play each and every instrument. Yeah, yeah. So that must have been quite stressful, but also joyful at the same time. Yes, it's always a pleasure for us to give. We love giving. And so if we can use our skills and our talents and our resources to give, mm -hmm. and especially to our community, we find much joy in doing that. And so since 2014, where we started, or 2013, when we started with that one student, we have grown pre-COVID to nearly 200 students, wow. and we are now past that mark of 200 post-COVID. Wow, that's, yeah. ama <laughs> that's amazing. You spoke about communities and uplifting one another and seeing always giving back. Yes. Now, we have been in relationship with the Mutual Spain Music Academy for quite some time yes. now. So I would like to know, when you got the con or when this conversation happened about the Mutual Spain Music Academy actually joining our lab's house first Thursdays, yes. what was your initial thought? and the reaction when you heard about First Thursdays happening in Mitchell's Plain? I was actually introduced through one of the singers called Juju, who really performs here, and I played with her as an accompanist on keyboard. And after that, then they started reaching out to the Music Academy, and I said, oh, well, it ties in with our mission and mm. some of our objectives, which is to create platforms and opportunities for all our students. Mm. And so when they approached us, and obviously we said yes, because we were excited for our students to perform and take the stage. Wow. And so I think it was in 2022, December, that first Thursday when I played with Juju, and then officially in 2023, yeah. we started that relationship with some of our students. We selected a few students for the first time to come and perform. And after the first performance at our lab, they were so happy, they were <laughs> joyous, the singers, the yeah. musicians. Um, and so we said, we definitely have to go back. <laughs> and so when the request came, we just kept on coming yeah. back. And so we are grateful for those opportunities. Wow, uh, you mentioned um, selecting students. I want to yes. know, what is that process like? So do you just be like, okay, first this is happening, who's going to perform? Or how, does, how do you take your students through that, preparing for that? Well, you can imagine having almost 200 and now over 200 students, it's difficult to select just a handful because we don't have, a, it's not a big space, yeah. you know, for a full orchestra to perform. But we have to select those that are ready to perform and those who show the potential of being able to take the stage. So it's a com combination of both those who are advanced and some of them who are intermediate because we want to give them platform to showcase their skill. And also more than the skill, it's also an employment opportunity, which ties in with our objectives as well, to create opportunities and also employment, which addresses a lot of the social ills in our community. Yes. And so when they get that performance or when they are selected, we look at all those factors and obviously the talent and yes. those who show that they are working hard and that they want to take the stage. <laughs> so that's a reward for them, I think. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. <laughs> and to show that it is viable actually as a career in yes. music. So this is just one platform for them to express themselves and also to show the rewards, like you mentioned, for partaking. Amazing. I think we always get excited when we see some familiar faces and yes. we get new faces in as yes. well. So like, oh, this is a new person. So that atmosphere and just excitement for them to actually experience the first crowd, even yes. though we know about the process. And you also mentioned coming back all the time. So why do you come back all the time when we ask, are you available? <laughs> Well, the coffee is good, <laughs> but besides the coffee, I, I can honestly say that the hospitality is great. The students love it, the, the venue that they get to perform it, and sometimes even one of our students or few of them actually performed in the building as well. They enjoy the atmosphere, mm. and it's the atmosphere of community and the environment and the culture where they come from and where they live in. And they can resonate with that and so and resonate with an audience as well so it's all these different elements that brings joy and that allows us then to come back and to also use the instrument as their voice whether it is a singer whether it is a violin player a pianist or a guitarist whoever it might be performing they get to express themselves and i think getting that platform where in an organized platform and a structured platform, I think that is the important thing and the driver to bring us every time back. Now we are thankful that you come back <laughs> all the time because we truly do enjoy what you guys bring in the community as well. Yes. So now they're familiar with the Mitchell Spray Music Academy. And just before you leave, 
uh, we are celebrating our second anniversary, wow. but you are going in for 10 now. <laughs> Any advice that you have for us that's still, still learning? Well, keep on doing what you are doing because it attracts people. You know, the, this specific gallery house attracts people who love art and it invites the community and it's open to the community, which is so important. Things that wasn't usually here, especially in a structured way. Mm. It addresses so many of our social issues still currently going on, but it is always inspiring to find places like the Gallery House, our labs and what you are doing, similar to what Mitchell Spain Music Academy and educational program yes. um, is doing in the community. And we need more spaces like this where people can come. So um, the standard that has been set is great and I would say keep on doing it um, and I hope that more others will come from here and start more gallery houses yes. throughout Mitchell's Plain. <laughs> no, we are hoping for that as well. Thank you so much for joining it's us today. Pleasure. How can we connect with the Mitchell's Plain Music Academy for those who are interested? They can connect with us via social media. We are active on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on WhatsApp as well. And on our website as well, they can just search for Mitchell's Plain Music Academy. Um, it, we, you'll find us on the internet and on all those social platforms. So even just email us, info at mitchellsplainmusicacademy.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And there you have it, you heard the story about how our lab's house and the Mitchell's Plain Music Academy all started. We'll see you next time. Today we have DJ Grandmaster Lady D with us um, and he's going to share about his journey with the Olaf's House and Art Gallery over the last two years. Um, but before we go into his journey there, maybe would you like to introduce yourself and just give us a little bit of a background of who is Lady D? Yeah, sure. I'm known as uh, DJ Lady D or Grandmaster Lady D. Um, people know me for my work that I do within hip hop um, music and the culture. I'm also a music producer as well. I've worked in television. I currently work in radio. I've been a part of the first generation of hip hop heads in South Africa. I've been one of the founder members of the group Prophets of the City, that's POC, um, BVK, Brasa Farikap, that is, the guys that does Ford's, Nissan Stories, and the Beatles, and Pochicos, as well as the Beat Bangers. And I'm also representing a non profit organization called GCAP. So I'm kind of all over the place and I wear many, many hats. Oh, thank you. Um, if you didn't know, Lady D, or DJ Lady D, is from Mitchell Spain. Um, and we I mean, everyone wants to know, like, why do you come to our labs? Why do you come to our labs house and art gallery? Like, what was the first thoughts for that? When I heard that our labs was going to be est establishing something out of Mitchell's Plain, it, I became very, very excited. I saw this building um, from the outside, of course, just when it was busy being built. Mm -hmm. And I even became more excited knowing that something special and spectacular was going to pop up in Mitchell's Plain. So back in the day, we used to dream about this space like this. And of course, we had other ideas, but we always knew we needed something in Mitchell's Plain that can kind of set a tone and also set a bar and a standard for community to come to and for young people to come to. And I think Art Labs is definitely, um, you know, fulfilling a lot of the thoughts that I personally had in my head and the type of discussions that I had with friends and knowing how time moves on as well, you know, and in terms of what our labs do here, it uh, even took that idea, you know, further than what I could have imagined it to be. Because us coming from a more of a music, um, sort of artistic background, uh, you think that the whole world evolves around you. So my thoughts are all about music and cars and art and all of that type of stuff. But the cool thing is, you know, coming to our labs, um, you, you guys and ladies are definitely embracing that aspect as well, and that's part of what makes me very excited about coming here. Coming here also provides me with a very positive experience, and I'm constantly learning. Um, every time I come into the space, and I'm seeing a lot of young people doing phenomenal things, and I always leave inspired. And the fact that I'm from Mitchell's Plain, you know, originally from District 6, but I spent most of my life in Lentech here, Mitchell's Plain. 
So coming here, it's kind of walking into your aspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, say so come here to be um, inspired and just to be in a good, clean, safe space. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I mean, you know, how do I say, you, you're part of the family, right? You've done work with us before, um, where we um, had you perform for some of our youth, but this time around it was different. This time around you, I'm going to speak specifically around Music Beyond the Flames, like what stemmed behind Music Beyond the Flames? Why? I mean, you could have gone to any art gallery, right? Yes. Why did you come to the one in Mitchell's Flame? With Music Beyond the Flames, just to provide the viewers with some context, um, I had a misfortune at my house. Um, part of our house went up in flames. We lost um, quite a lot in that fire. So a lot of what I've collected through the years in terms of my music collection with my vinyls, and there was a whole lot of other memorabilia that I've collected you know, from all over the world, including South Africa, um, our equipment, our resources that, that we use in our road safety and youth development programs went up in flames. Our cars that we use in the program went up in flames as well. And um, I was looking at the rubble after the fire and the insurance wanted us to take a full <laughs> count of all the vinyl because I thought, you know, I could somehow claim for that. And unfortunately, we didn't get covered. And I was sitting and thinking, instead of sitting there and going into victim mode, how else can we change the narrative and how else can we, you know, rescue what was left within the rubble? And a part of the thought that went through my head is, look, you are involved already in a very artistic culture, which is hip-hop culture by nature and at its root. It, it, it's, it's artistic. Mm -hmm. And I thought, now how about salvaging whatever you can and develop it and put it into, um, into art where we can preserve the story behind all of that and also maintain and preserve the, the history and the heritage as well because it's not just my story. It's a global story at the end of the day as well because there's a whole lot that comes connected to the species. And then I reached out to Falco um, and Falco is a very famous graffiti artist from um, Cape Town. In fact, he's from just down the road here where our labs is as well. And Falco further planted seeds in my head and he was like, nah, this is cool, I can't be in, I'm on board. And when that happened, I was sitting and going, look, I'm from Mitchell's Plain, Falco's from Mitchell's Plain. More than half of what went up in flames here, mm. I collected while I lived in Mitchell's Plain, yeah. you know, and also tracing the roots of um, hip hop culture in our country, in its heyday, or should I say through the golden era, it was all Mitchell's Plain that kind of represented the culture yeah. in a big way. <clears throat> and then um, coming to Art Labs, I think it was on the first Thursday, mm. when Art Labs House did the art exhibitions and all of that, the light bulb went off. And I was like, I need to come and speak to Mr. Marlon Parker and pitch my idea to him to see if there's any way that we could use the salvage um, rubble and bits and pieces, turn it into art and see if we can come and have it exhibited over here. Um, he came to my place, he came to look at you know, what we were up to and he was like, okay, cool, we can do this, we can do that, we can do this. And I'm like, yes, please, let's do, yeah, let's just do, do, do. And uh, thankfully, you know, we came to an agreement mm. and um, that's how Music Beyond the Flames came to be. And also Music Beyond the Flames, also uh, the, the philosophy around that mm. is telling people, yes, we went through something quite traumatic, um, something that was really, um, that impacted the person um, in, in a very, very bad way, emotionally, mentally, to a point spiritually as well, you know, because you start to question things. But life goes on. Mm. Thankfully, we were spared. None of us were injured. It could have been much worse. Mm. So as long as you got your, your health, you got your talent, you got your, your, your family, and you got people around you that support you, it means that you're able to still make music. Mm. So the flames, the fire was there, but we still make music beyond the flames, and we turn this into something that could potentially be much bigger as well. And thanks to our labs for helping us um, make that materialize, we sit here to tell the story. Thank you so much, Rashili. I mean, I know about Music Beyond the Flames, but the depth behind it, I don't think I knew about that up until now. So thank you, Rashili. Um, I mean, before we end off, do you mind telling us if you could, or no, not if you could, 
you've performed quite a few times at us, you've visited us a couple of times just to enjoy what we have on offer. Um, why, why is it that you're always coming back to this space? The reason why I always come back to our labs, number one, as I've mentioned before, um, the, the, the energy in this space, it's a really good, clean, positive energy. And you can also tell you know, by the people that is within the Art Labs ecosystem as well. The type of encounters and the exchanges that we have with everybody over here, for me it's really been um, uh, welcoming. At, you know, at, at, on all accounts I would say that. And I also see the potential for building a much stronger partnership as well. You know, because I have a lot of hopes, dreams and aspirations and I see a lot of what we are doing could potentially be build a stronger bond and a synergy with Art Labs as well. And hopefully, um, you know, we can explore that and see how else we can impact our communities as well. And once again, I love being in a, in a space where I feel safe as well. And I know that um, a space like Art Labs kind of sends a signal across communities locally to tell people, look, a lot of the, the, the places and the spaces on the Cape Flats have a very, very sort of negative, stereotypical connotation attached to that. So when you come into our labs and you see the space and you meet the people, it kind of challenges that, um, um, that narrative as well. You know, so you kind of, um, how do you say, our labs is the counter towards that type of thinking and it also shows you what the potential is, you know, of people coming out of Cape Town City, people coming from Mitchell Spain and the Cape Flats. And I always tell people, yes, um, we come from a, a very, very difficult past and a very difficult history, but what are we going to do mm. as individuals, as people and communities to change that? We can't always be the victim. You yeah. can't always blame a part that you can't always bl blame the government. And if you don't connect yourself with, um, with people doing positive things, and if you don't um, align yourself or connect yourself to the solution, then of course you're going to be on the sidelines complaining about things. Yeah. And I see our labs as a space that provides solutions. And in terms of my thinking, you know, I would like to learn and I would like to be a part of the solution. Thank you. I know I said before we end up, but we're sitting behind such a, in front of such a beautiful art piece. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> quite intentional. Um, do wow. you, before we end off, like this is really my last question. Um, what was the inspiration behind this piece? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, this is actually one of the art pieces from some of the rubble hmm. from the fire at my house. And this is um, one of the artists that we reached out to, Mr. Dion Kibido, and he's a very, very popular artist that exhibits his work right here at Our Labs. He came on board, and um, when I spoke to him, I told him, um, Dion, whatever you want to do, don't hold back. And some of the pieces that's integrated into the art um, over here, you can see there's a lot of album covers and a lot of the album covers are all iconic hip-hop album covers right through from the one on the far left, which is Schooly D. He's a rapper from Philadelphia. And apparently he was the pioneer of gangster rap. And the irony is right next to Schooly D's Prophets of the City. That was our first album, POC. And then we also see um, Wu-Tang Clan. We also see the inner sleeve of our very first album um, titled Our World. And in there, that's my handwriting, writing out all the credits. Um, and then next to that, um, I can't remember, I just have to take a closer look, but woven into the piece are all iconic pieces. Um, we see 50 Cent at the top there, and you actually got to go further into the piece. You really have to study the piece to truly appreciate what was actually going on, um, you know, and what the intent and the story is. Oh, can, can, can I get up? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> I just want to point out this over here. That over there, that is um, uh, cutting records, and that particular label and that song, that song is titled Al the Fish. So what happened with that song, or the story behind that vinyl, I have 16 copies of that vinyl. And I used to use that in DJ battles. So my first and second South African DJ championship titles, I won using that. Oh. And when we toured the world, the prophets of the city, when it came to my turn to do my DJ demos, 
uh, I would use that song to do I would use that song to do the DJ demos with. So there's a there's a lot of depth and there's a lot of stories mm. woven into all of that. You know, from the music to the labels, the story behind the labels, the characters, and all of those things. So thank you for sharing um, with that. And I know besides you being DJ Lady D, you also have GCAP. Um, do you mind just sharing your social media with people so that with our audience so that they could then follow you and get engaged with the um, work that you do? Yeah, sure. You can follow me at DJ Ready D. That is DJ R E A D Y D. And that's all my social media platforms there. And with uh, regards to GCAP, it is all capital letters. It's all G C A P. And it stands for the Great Cape Ambassadors Project. Thank you so much. DJ Lady for You're taking time out um, to share your story with us. Well, well, well um, thanks for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you. Again, if you've missed our first Thursday on the 1st of August, you are welcome to join us on any other Saturday during the month where we are celebrating where Art and Hope meets artists from the Cape Flats um, showcasing their work for the first time. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Shanique Jacobs, one of the co-hosts at Art Labs House. Now, Art Labs House is celebrating its second anniversary in the month of August. And what better way to celebrate it is to hear all about how Art Labs House has started. And joining me today is none other than the fearless and daring woman, Mrs. Renee Park, who is also the co-founder of Art Labs. Welcome, Renee. Thank you, Shanique. So, Renee, how has our Labs House start in the Airbnb business. So Our Labs House, you know, even even the name we you know, know comes, comes from Our Labs, and, and we use, we the, use the word house, house and gallery. Twofold. The mm -hmm. first one was as um, a Airbnb host myself. I've been doing Airbnb for four years now, and when we got this property as Our Labs, this house specifically. We were thinking, how are we going to get it to generate money? And then we were thinking, okay, we want people to come to the location when they come visit our labs. Is there a place for them to stay? Mm. And that's when we thought, let's use the Airbnb platform because we were familiar with it already. Um, and let's put the room on Airbnb. So that's really how it, how it started. And then we added the gallery part. Mm. But the gallery specifically, it was more for selfish reasons as art labs <laughs> because we had a lot of art. Yes, you know we've been collecting art for a long time, and it was like, mm, here's a place where we put what we fill the holes with, mm. and that's really the start of art labs house and gallery. Amazing. So when you mention it's a gallery and an Airbnb, I'm sure people that have stayed in your space they might get it con like twisted or confusing most of the time. So why is it that they make them understand once they book the space what will they have access to and what's that process like for them? So for people booking, especially if they only use the Airbnb platform or a platform that does short-term rentals, um, they are only used to doing accommodation mm -hmm. and then people that normally go to a gallery, you don't generally get to sleep in a gallery. Yes, so <laughs> yes that's unique. <laughs> that's definitely one of the unique things about this and we really wanted to you know take our two passions about hosting people we love people we love hosting people we love people to feel at home and we love people to experience art mm. and the beauty of it and so bringing the two together so for i think it takes a certain individual to want to come and stay here because firstly you should um you, of course you're going to look for accommodation and a place to stay but the secondly, you would want a different type of accommodation, a different type of experience. Mm. Because, of course, the walls are filled with art pieces. Um, it's a private room in a shared space, which means other people would most likely come and walk around and view the art pieces in the, in the gallery. Yeah. And location. I think location is very important. You mentioned the fine art and now they have a luxury, but location is also important. right? So when you tell people that... <laughs> there's actually a gallery and an Airbnb in Mitchell's Plain. 
what is the reaction like and how do you convince them to actually make sure that they can actually stay the space is actually fine for them to stay in <laughs> oh to convince them doesn't really take a lot mm. because our price point is very good mm. you know so we were very clear it should be affordable anyone should be able to afford it um, and secondly when people come they of course want a, a clean space yes. a safe space and it needs to be comfortable mm. and therefore the room that we are <laughs> in the yes. bathroom it's beautiful it's stylish it's modern um, and these were all things that we decided to add to make the experience. So once somebody's in the house, they shouldn't feel like they're in Mitchell's plane. Mm. You know, they should just feel like, oh, wow, I, I'm at home. I feel comfortable. So with the, the location being Mitchell's plane, we find a lot of people. Um, we actually have two kinds of guests that come, if I may share that. Yes. So the first guest, the first type of guest that we get is somebody that's looking for an experience. So it would be somebody not from South Africa, mm. right? Um, when they inquire about the uh, Airbnb, we always ask them, um, are you familiar with Mitchell's Plain? Are you familiar with Cape Town and surrounding areas? We tell them how far we are from the airport, from the city center, just so that they have a sense of where we are located. Mm. Um, once they are comfortable with that, we find that for many of them, they still choose to come here because it's something different. You know, and it's very unique. And we had um, someone from the Netherlands that booked. And when we asked the question and he was saying, you know what, I'm an artist. I love art. When am I ever going to have a chance to sleep in a gallery? <laughs> and his reason for booking was purely that. It wasn't close to any tourist um, places for mm. him. And because we have security, we have 24 hour security, we have backup power. For him, he felt safe. Mm. Um, the second type of guest we get generally during December and January would be people that have family in Mitchell's Plain. And then we would get the inquiry and, and they would say, my mom lives close by, my sister, there's a family function, um, but their house can't accommodate all of us. Mm. And then they would need accommodation close to their family. So we find between December, January or holiday times, we have a lot of locals. So whether they were from Mitchell's Plain or Cape Town before or generally South Africans come and stay mm. to be close to their families. And the rest of the year it would be foreigners. Sometimes we have research students. Um, so we have students that come uh, and they may be working with a project close by and this is a perfect location. And you know as students your budget is really tight. Yes. So affordability plays a big part in that. And that is generally... Of course, I'm generalizing now, but generally, those are the two types of guests yes, yes, we have. Amazing. So I know that it's very important for people to enjoy, right? And you as receiving those guests, what is it that you want them to feel once they book the space with you? And once they leave, what has been the reviews like, what they say about our lives? House? So, you know, on a, on a personal level, I do quite a bit of traveling. So I've been in different countries, landing... Um, in the middle of the night somewhere for the first time and getting to a, a room or guest house and feeling like oh, I wish I could just go to my own bed I wish I could go to my own room nothing I not, none of my own items are around yes. me and therefore we make sure the the space itself has everything you need mm. so if you forgot your toothbrush as an example you know your soap your whatever it is mm. we make sure that it's here just so that when you come, there shouldn't be anything that you need. Oh. And of course, the, the design, the layout, the colors we use, um, we make sure that it's, it's welcoming. Mm. And you need to feel like, I can just stay here for a long time. Yeah. You know, and we have most guests that actually stay in this day. They booked a few nights and they're like, wow, I did not expect this. Can I extend my stay? Or we have recurring guests now, you know, and of course, we've built up our clientele over the years. Um, and when people leave, they, the reviews, we as Olive's House are super host. Once again, we're really excited about Yay. that. I think it's been five times yes, now. In the yes, congratulations. <laughs> um, and, you know, running Olive's House is a team effort. Hmm. And this is one of the things we discovered. You know, it doesn't matter whose name is on there as the host. It takes a whole team to make this 
happen from keeping it clean to whoever's doing the bedding to stocking up um, to welcoming the guests to checking in the guests to making sure that they're okay yes um so it really takes a team to make people feel feel welcome and at home i think that's yes. important as well so now that we heard about how our labs has started and all of that what is the future plans taking short term rental into the mm. future so as our labs um we are in different countries and this was really a model that we thought let's test it we generally test everything here you know mm. where we our home is and we've seen that it works so we really want to test this model in a different part of whether it's South Africa or on the continent so wherever there's a our labs there should be a our labs house close Ooh. by um of course you know i think we should do uh, another recording after this <laughs> you know once we establish somewhere yes. else because it will be really great to see what is the reception like you mm. know are people ready our communities ready for it this one we found in the beginning a lot of people did not understand our why mm. why are you doing this um and we thought you know what we're not going to know until we do it do mm. and so bringing art together bringing you know our tagline is we art and hope meet because our our vision for art labs is making hope contagious mm. and being able to bring these two worlds together has really shown that it can be done and that people are ready for beautiful things i totally believe so for our labs has turning to it is quite a milestone for me i believe because <laughs> how you guys started off with your launch and having first thursday and we now actually celebrating your second anniversary any words for the people that they should should just be a look out for and what our labs has has want to do firstly we do want to thank everyone for us over the past two years whether it was booking whether it was coming by yes you know some people just want to see what is happening true they're like oh we heard he has a airbnb we heard he has a guest house and they would literally say can we just come in mm. and see and they just do a walk through right so from those people to most of our bookings also come from word of mouth So the the platform itself it's there it really helps with ease of booking mm. safety and all those things but people are referred word of mouth so once a guest stays someone else will pop in our timeline <laughs> and say my friend or my cousin or someone I know stayed there before when I want to come back so we do want to thank those people you know i think it's really important our labs house would not have lost it 2 years if it wasn't for a whole community making it work and we are excited about reaching 2 years mm. for any business it's a milestone yes <laughs> you know even just to make it every month yes. is a milestone <laughs> but for 2 years to run a, a short term rental uh, art gallery and consistently have people coming people still interested you know the one of the things that's really important for us is also keeping it new mm. keeping it fresh yes you know and so i think definitely you know let's Let's see what is next. Thank you so much, Rene. And there you have it. Comfort, luxury, fine art, love and hope all in one. Thank you, Art Labs House, for celebrating two years.